Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at the Hack the Boo CTF that just wrapped up from Hack the Box. Uh, this is a beginner-themed, or I guess ha Halloween-themed beginner-focused CTF. Um, it had five challenges a day across five different categories um, over five days. So I'm going to try to, I don't know exactly how many videos I'll make for that, but the first one here I'm looking at is Wrong Spooky Season, a forensics challenge. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We can go ahead and see there's a single PCAP file. So we'll go ahead and open that in Wireshark. That's a, uh, you know, it's gonna be a packet capture. It's gonna be network data. Um, and so before we look at any of these packets here, I'm gonna always go up here to statistics and uh, to conversations. And what I wanna get here is, first of all, for a CTF, I need to know, do they throw in a ton of loud data and is, is part of the challenge finding the data that matters or do they just give me the data I need to look at? And so I can tell very quickly here, there's 15 TCP streams, that's not very many. Um, there's only two, endpoints talking to each other. So it's dot 166 talking to dot 180. Um, so it's going to be a small amount of data and I can probably afford to look through all of it. Um, I can come over here to the, the TCP streams and say, okay, dot 180 is coming in on these different random high ports to always 8080 on dot 166. So I think 166 must be a web server of some kind. Well, a server of some kind for sure, probably a web server given the port 8080. Um, until the very end, this, or I guess the very top, this one packet here, or one stream here, dot .166. So the server is now connecting back to what had been the client on 1337. So what I think already is there's probably some kind of web exploitation going on, and they've caused the, they've exploited the server, and they've got execution on the server, and they're having the server connect a reverse shell back to them on port leet. Um, so that's what I'm going to, that's what's supposed to be my head is my best guess is what's going on with, before we even look. Um, the other statistics we can take a look at is the uh, protocol hierarchy. And we'll see the same kind of thing here. So it's all Ethernet, it's all IPv4, it's all TCP. And then there's two branches here. There's hypertext, you know, HTTP, it makes up 7% here. And then at the bottom, we have data is the following 2%. Um, we could, you know, if, we're, if our goal is to rush to the flag, right, we could come right here and say, this is the interesting conversation to us. We're going to uh, apply as a filter this, you know, this conversation. Now, if we close this, we can see the filter up here is IP address equals that and TC port, P, TCP port equals that and IP address equals uh, dot 180 and 1337. So we effectively have that stream. Um, we could now follow the TCP stream and we've got the shell data. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and look here. Well, no, let's, let's stop. So, but we don't want to see, we're not going to do that yet. We want to understand what was actually going on in this PCAP. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the beginning. Um, we'll scroll up to the very top here, and we will follow this TCP stream. And so we were right; it is web. It is web traffic coming through here, um, and it looks like some kind of website coming back. We could potentially save this off and look at it ourselves, but but it's not probably not. Well, we we could. We aren't going to do that quite yet. Um, we'll step forward a little bit. And we have more now. We're seeing the assets like JPEGs coming down. Um, one thing to be aware of is that HTTP will stream within the same stream. We could often see multiple requests. So you could see, let's see, if I go back to stream zero, I think there was probably one in there because I saw some binary data. So here's all those HTTP responses. And if I keep scrolling down somewhere, maybe not. Oh, yep, there we go. So, so there you can see there's some, uh, there was some red again, and you can see now it's getting, you know, a JPEG and it's getting different pieces here. So that you, it's worth knowing that you might need to look for different things, but a lot of times it's just going to be all the assets on the page. So we're probably okay to skip ahead a little bit. Um, we got a witch.jpg, another image, another image, another image. And all of a sudden we got something kind of weird. Um, this is what, does this make any sense at all? Um, no, but it's certainly interesting. And we can start to step through again and we can say, okay, now, now it's doing this class module resources pipeline pattern and it's got this stuff here i don't know quite know what's going on yet but we can step ahead and we can see um now we've got a prefix a suffix and a c runtime um you know and now we have a pattern again i'm not sure what's going on and now all of a sudden and we will go back and look at that we'll figure out what's going on but now all of a sudden i've got a web shell because <laughs> now we're visiting this e e4d1 blah 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 dot jsp java server pages and the command is equal to who am I? And the result is equal to root. So we've got execution here. Um, let's step back for a second though and see if we can figure out what's going on. Um, we'll go to the first stream here. And if we grab this, if we grab class module loader and copy that. And we go over to Firefox and paste this in. 
Oops. Maybe we'll go to Google first and paste this in. We get the anatomy of a spring for shell vulnerability. So um, this was a this was a big one in the news. We heard all about it, and we can start to scroll through here and look at the different pieces and what are they doing? What are they talking about? And so they say the first thing you want to do is use a post request to overwrite the directory where it's going to be written, and they're going to write to this uh, parent directory one. Um, then we are going to set a prefix and a suffix of the file to store it in. Um, so we're going to be doing that in there. Um, and, and this is all, I mean, again, I don't have to go into the details of exactly what's going on here, but here's the first pattern thing we saw. Um, but we can say, oh, this is probably, you know, we probably have a Spring for Shell application here that's getting exploited. So we figured out kind of what the vulnerability is and how they're getting this execution. Um, so stepping forward, we got who am I, we've got ID, we can see we're running as root. Um, we can now see we run apt-y install socat. So they're installing socat onto the server. Um, now we are running socat to connect back on port 337 and we're execing bash. So this is our reverse shell right here. We've, now we've got our shell. And if we step to the next one, we now have, so now we have interacting with that shell. So we have ID, we get the results, we have groups, we have a uname, we're reading Etsy password. Uh, we're looking for SUID files. Okay, that's essentially interesting. Um, and now we are putting our reverse shell into the bash RC. So that means anytime root logs onto this box, um, the reverse shell is going to kick off again to connect back. That's persistence. Um, and then we're going to echo something into reverse and then into dev null. Um, that's probably our flag. And then we're going to change mod plus, uh, plus s bin bash. So we're making, making bin bash run as root. Um, by default, no matter what user is running it. So more persistence. So next time, I get, next time a user gets on, they can make sure they can escalate. Um, so we're interested in this flat, this string right here. If you do any number of CTFs, you're going to recognize, especially these double equal signs. But anytime you have um, uppers, lowers, um, numbers, and then you know slash and dash, uh, slash and uh, plus. Anytime you see that, you can you're gonna to start to think about base64. It can end in zero or up zero, one or two equal signs, base64, right? Um, now this one happens to be backwards, and they're nice enough to pipe it into rev for us. So we'll jump over here and we'll we'll let's, we'll do the same thing. So we'll background Wireshark, although we probably don't need it. Um, if we echo this string, we'll print it to the screen. If we echo it into rev, now we'll print it to the screen backwards. That's what we, that looks like a legit base64 string right there. And now we will pipe that into base 64 minus D to decode it. And there's our flag. So uh, we can, and, and you know, Java Spring just became Java Spooky. So we're on the right path with the Java stuff there. Um, so we got the flag. Um, hopefully that was fun and useful. Thanks for sticking around till the end. If you liked the video, give me a like. Um, and uh, thanks, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.